black students. So that's a that's a big goal. Um, in the current in the past year, current year now being the new data should come out. Well, in Florida, the new data is already out, which I'll show you. Um, so in in here are the um, so to take the first step, the purpose, and then to take the first step in terms of um, connections to network info and data um, identification here is Ohio is here. Uh, Florida will go up here as soon as we finalize. Once we finalize the first 10 in Florida, Florida conference will go here. Um, but it's going to go straight to your um, uh, um, uh, website that's under construction. Um, but Florida would be next. And here is um, Alabama, which I'll just go to Alabama. If I click on Alabama, uh, it's going to go straight um, uh, to um, the State Department of Education. So that's step one. Because in step one, as you can see in their picture, um, they're already looking at charts and data, which is really what this is about. Then you can go to education, educator data. You can go to school data. Uh, so this is how theirs is set up. So that automatically gives us a feed into Alabama. When he calls, that's the first thing I'll do uh, with him is to go to that area. Uh, in terms of um, California, they have a, a place uh, working data. And, and this information is about education data. Then it's just a matter of the person. Uh, once we get a person from California, it'll be the same thing. Um, you click into it and the data takes you to, and then is the data quest homepage, and you just walk right through it. So as you can see, uh, let's just go to Florida next. And so Florida is out the gate already. It has its 2024 data already um, set already in, in here. Um, so it's already up. Um, the Florida report cards, which I'm going to, I'm just going to go a different section here. Um, Florida report cards um, are already up and out. And as you can see, as I walk through this, this is how easy it's going to be uh, once we identify personnel. I'm going to start the process already, but what I'm showing you is that uh, here uh, are state reports and here are district reports and here are school reports. So going through here is going to be pretty um, simple in terms of walking through the state of Florida's as a state controlling its, its system. It's already set up to do that. You, the only thing we're waiting for is to talk to someone about what's called advanced reports and downloads. So these are the advanced reports and um, data that you can download. The one I'm waiting for, having gone um, this far, is here are specific schools. But they have a section in here um, that is, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to hit this one. So you can click this one, and you can actually like can you play cells? You can select a school district. And as you can see, they just go all the way down uh, in terms of selecting a school district. And then you can go into that school district. So let's just, if, if we're talking about a school district and it was um, uh, Dade uh, County, uh, where that uh, Mr. Uh, President Ford is, uh, uh, same thing view district report card. So the information is right there. The technique is just learning to do it, which is a matter of just walking through it. Uh, over here, you can actually look up a particular school by name, um, and you can select it by district, or you can select it by school, and then you can view that report. Now, what I'm waiting for is the, um, they've been very responsive in terms of without um, in, in a public records request, because that's the 
that's the first step we take once we reach a place where we need help. And that's the place where I'll need help. So all this is already done. It's already set up. It's already ready to go. It's just a matter of navigating through um, that state. So all of the states that we have here, I'm going to go out of here for a minute and just show you this. So Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Kansas, Michigan, New York, North Carolina, uh, Ohio, uh, South Carolina, Tennessee, uh, and Wisconsin. So what you just saw me do for Florida, all that's already set up and is already on the website. Any questions? Not yet. Okay, good. Okay. So if I go, I want to go back here for a minute. Um, and there is a, uh, let's, let's go in here. So what I just did was look at, I popped Florida as a state to look at a, what's called a dashboard. So I can very easily, for people that are in Florida, to teach them how to do this. This is why I said anyone who wants to do it would take about an hour. You, you can see how quickly um, we just did it. Everything I showed you was done in three minutes. So when I say we only need an hour, the hour is to really walk through the process, then come out of the process, have the person, let's say, Mr. Ford, um, Google Florida Department of Education, period, so that they're actually doing it on their side because you, you want that person to have a feel for it. But it's the, those are the one, two, three steps that you just saw me go through. And at that point, the person wants to have some background. And as you can see here, um, there are 67 traditional schools. There are nine special districts. There are 3,317 traditional public schools and 729 uh, public charter school. So that's kind of all set up. Um, there's a correlation here between what the trend is, and they use um, a comparison between 23 and 22, and 24 is here. They already have 2024 up here, as you can see here. So they're kind of ahead, specifically of Ohio. That's what I'm comparing it to uh, in terms of getting their data up, ready to go. And then there are comparisons over time. Um, by districts and grades, uh, school count by grade. And then, as you can see, so you see a lot of information uh, for background and for assessment. So if I'm going to go here, so now I'm going to go to step four. And in step four, it's going to repopulate. And when it repopulates, it gives you a different set of of data, as you can see here. Let me just bring this down. So this is 2324 English Language Arts Assessment by Achievement. And and this is statewide, which you, I don't know, can you see this right here? Yes. Okay. So this is statewide. And that's the first thing that the person wanted to look at is how is the state doing according to its latest data? For some if it's not up yet, it's going to be 22, 23, because Florida is kind of ahead. It's going to be current, 23, 24. So it's going to give you, this. their scale is zero to 100%. So it's going to tell you what percent, um, uh, what statewide level is um, zero to 20, what percent is um, zero uh, to 30, and then it's going to tell you in each of these particular categories, you can, you can actually go here and it'll tell you, it'll pop that data out. So in here, right below that, um, these are grade levels. And as you can see, it kind of gives you information. Um, but if you, let's say right here, um, I want to do 23, 24 here. I want to see um, all achievement measurements. I want to use the subject of the English language arts, which is what we're doing for reading the map. And then here, you can go here and say, 
I want to do uh, uh, view this chart. Now, remember the chart you're looking at now. It's 20%, uh, 24%, 22 20 and 12 So they have, like Ohio, there are five levels. So if you look at these levels in terms of an educator, um, this is the lowest level, one, which we would call, if I were looking at this chart, this would be an F. Um, this would be a D. Uh, this would be a C. This would be a B. And this would be an A. So all you're doing is saying, okay, how would I communicate those various levels to parents? Well, this is the bottom 20%, um, the bottom 44%. And then you get into the central area and above. So uh, 22%, uh, 20%, which is 42. And then the 12, um, which would be 53% uh, proficient and above. And this would be below. So, so right now I'm going to do switch from the state as a whole, all students. I, in this subgroup, I dropped in Black, African American. Then I'm going to click this chart. Now, what that's uh, what that's showing you overall in comparison to statewide. Remember this bottom number, which is F, was 20, but for African Americans, it's, it's 29.8. In this particular area, which would be D. Is 29.2. So if you if you, um, you you're looking at about 58 percent of African American kids, as opposed to the 44 percent, are in the DF category. And so that's how we can compare it by using these graphs. And the percent that's um, proficient is 20.6. The next category is 14, and at the top level is six. So we're looking at 20, um, then we're looking at 14, which is, would be 34, um, and we're looking at six. So we're talking about 40%, roughly 40% of the kids are proficient and, and above, and um, uh, 60%, roughly 58, 60% are below proficient. That's where um, the important piece for us to know. So we want to see where our kids are scoring in these three categories. Um, talking about A, going reverse, this is the top, this would be A, this would be B, C, D, F. That's how we make the correlation that makes it easy for parents. It makes it easy for the person who's doing it as well. If they can relate the number to a number, um, it works really well. Uh, in terms of overall. So as you can see here, this is this particular chart is reflective specifically of African American students overall in the state as of the year that just ended, 23-24. So this is the latest data available. It's the latest year that's completed. Um, and uh, let's see, I want to go through three things before. Um, Let's go through. I'm going to switch charts, and I'm going to go to um, uh, uh, um, so here we can go through the assessment side of things in terms of general data. It's all here per pupil expenditure. Let's go to per pupil expenditure for a minute, and that just gives you a quick look. All this is an overview of um, this is Total cost per pupil uh, is 10000 So all of this can be broken down. So what's state funding? What's federal funding? What's total funding? So all of this information is readily available to be used um, across the board. Now that's, let's see, that was about um, in 12 minutes, 12 of the 60 minutes that I'm talking about, all of that information can be seen. It can be seen by race, and that's looking at it statewide. So that's the first thing the person would want to have 
as background information. Where is that data? And I always tell people, when you do that, just go right here so that and email yourself that particular page uh, if you don't want to go, if you don't want to bring the whole department up each time, you just email that page and you'll come right back um, to this data because that's what we, we would tell a parent that's interested uh, doing parent training. So the big view, we just did all of the big view and then we went to buy black versus all and boom. We're there already, and so I can, I can select the district. Let's um, let's go back to what I said before. Um, trying to, <coughs> I'm going to go back to date because um, I don't know if they have date in here as a. Do you know what the name? Of, well, what's the name of the dis district in your area? The name of the district. Uh huh. Uh, you said in my area. I'm just. I'm just trying to trying to think through. Uh, Homestead is the area I live in. Okay, you live in Homestead. Let's see if it's mm -hmm. Homestead. Is, uh, sure it is. Um, <clears throat> It says homes. I'm not sure if, if it's the same mm -mm, one. No, that's different. Homestead. Yeah. Well, let's just use that one. Oh, do you know a school? Can you think of a school in your in your area? Any school? Um. Oh goodness, I I immediately go back to Liberty City. I'm I'm so sorry. Um. Zip, 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 zip. But t t tell me where there's a. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I'm sorry. What was the second question? I heard you say school. Yeah. Well, let me. I was just going to go in alphabetical order. It should right? be. There is a so, homestead school there. That's why I was surprised it didn't pop up. Because there's a homestead yeah. uh, middle. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go. Something it's, that's known mm -hmm. in here. Is there a Broward County? I mean, there is a Broward County. Oh, those County are district. counties there. Those are not schools these, in, the, in the district. No, these are in this particular area. It's the name of a district. Yeah, yeah. No, so I was telling I was, you that Miami Dade County, Miami Dade County is is the county. Is, is a county. Is, is, nah, so it, it's, the, it's the county. Miami Dade County is all of the. Okay. Yeah, okay. all of the Good. area, all of okay. Miami Dade County, that includes so, Homestead, you know, other schools. Areas. Okay. Liberty okay, City. So I'm going to. Opalaka. Opalaka? Mm -hmm. Those are areas That's in nice Miami name. Dade County. And those are name of, names of schools as well. Um, <laughs> well these are, these are counties it? in Florida. Is there, is there a school? This, uh, there's a district called OC. Osceola. 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 Uh huh. That's another district in Florida. Yes. Okay. Let's take. Um, um, a well, I was wondering why Florida. Dade County didn't come up. Yeah, I'm gonna look back because I don't oh, okay. know if they're, they're listed, either Dade County Dade or Miami County. Dade County. They may be called yeah, one or the we, other. Yeah, there may be two or three districts in that county. Well, not just two or three. No, that more, than, more that. than that. Miami Dade County. Yeah. That's the largest in okay, the state. So, so I'm looking at the Osceola School District report card okay. right here. Oh, okay. All right. So once won't any district that we know of, we can look at that by district, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can go over here and say, okay, well, I I really want to look at that by uh, by okay. school. Once mm -hmm. once get it in there. And I click that. Say I selected a district before. So in selecting a district, you'd have to select this school. Mm -hmm. And then let's say Quinn, I don't know what that is. But as you can see, and now this brings up a map in Quinn City report card. 
It shows you where it is, um, and it gives you all the same data that the that you saw for the state. Mm -hmm. You see the same thing for each district, and you can see the same thing for each school. So a search is easy. We've gone um, 17 minutes, mm -hmm. and we've gone from what's the big picture um, down to a district, down to a school. Mm -hmm. All from, let's say one, two, three, four, five. That's about five steps mm -hmm. in 15. So it makes it easy um, uh, to do this. It's just a question of, as I said before, and that's why I wanted to do it with you so you already know, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of background, in case someone asks, you're already doing it. It's just a matter of going through the data and mm -hmm. duplicating and replicating what Ohio did so that it's it. no one's trying to create something. I'm going to show you. I'm not, I'm not sure if you saw New York's um, um email yesterday. I'm going to go to that in a minute. I, I did I wanna... see what, she's, um, what the educational specialist sent in. Yeah, I'm going, yeah. To, I'm going to respond to something. There was one thing she did a great job by the way, but there's one thing in there we want to be careful of and I'm going to go there. So in terms of for those for the person that's going to be trained and is mm -hmm. a trainer, trainer I'll train the key person. The key person can then train others. So it's the old train, the train the business. So this is advanced, mm -hmm. right? So we went through regular. Now we're looking at PK-12. <clears throat> now we're going to look at assessments, and we're looking mm -hmm. at assessments statewide. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to let it bring it itself up. It, it it's looking at a horde of data, so it takes it a minute to to come up by over two million. All right, so it asks ask you to acknowledge and accept the fact. And what it says here, I mean, it's very small. Beginning with 2023 school year, Florida implemented new statewide standard uh, standardized assessments in English language arts, uh, mathematics. Um, the Florida Assessment of Student Thinking. Now, you're going to hear, uh, you've probably already heard this, but two things they want to know. What does FAST, F-A-S-T, means? And it's the Florida Assessment of Student Thinking. They're going to want to know what BEST, B-E-S-T, is, because mm -hmm. those are the benchmarks for excellent student mm -hmm. thinking. So those two things go together. And you find that right here in this block. All that, and once you understand that block, you have to hit mm -hmm. accept. So it's a little background before you go in the data. And now, this is your this is your advanced piece, right? So mm -hmm. as an advanced chart, this is the whole state of Florida. You can see it's interactive. Okay. Um, where are you in this map? You're, what, what city are you in? I'm down uh, about 15 miles from Key West. Homestead is... So you're down in this, this area. Okay, I'm, at so the this bottom. Is... I'm at the bottom. I'm near the bottom right here at, at the tail end. Okay. Of the, uh, right. You see where I'm pointing? I mean, you can't... Um, Look at the end of the see. map, the top of the map, okay. and there's the end. You see, yeah, you see this hand right here? I'm Do right down my... here. At, this is Miami-Dade right here. That's right. Well, that's that's the county. Okay, so there's the county. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Miami-Dade. There's a mm -hmm. Miami-Dade district name, which is School. this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we can take a look at that. There are... 204,378 students in that area. And right. um, mm -hmm. the achievement level that they start with is level three and above. Of the 204,378 students, mm -hmm. level three, which would be their proficient, that would be mm -hmm. a C, and then they give you that level and above 
um, and then there's the achievement level in terms of numbers is 113,548 achieved a C or above. Mm -hmm. And that's 56%. Mm -hmm. So I got all that information on this interactive chart. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Now, over what? here, notice, mm -hmm. notice this says map. When it says map, that means mm -hmm. it's mapping the whole state of Florida. So I can look at the mm -hmm. whole state of Florida by mm -hmm. the map. So yes. if I wanted to go to Miami-Dade County, I would just go here. Mm -hmm. I would uh, click on Miami-Dade County. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, and right here, I'm looking at uh, Miami-Dade County here, uh, 204,378. 113,548 are um, at the level, uh, at this level and above. And mm -hmm. then that's 56%. So you have you have the total number of students. You have the percent of those students that are uh, mm -hmm. proficient or are above. And then you have the percent of the total number. Mm -hmm. all, all of that is located here, right? Mm -hmm. And this... The first one is the state of Florida. So you can actually compare Dade County is slightly ahead in terms of percent because the state is at 53%. Uh, mm -hmm. Miami Dade is at 56%. Mm -hmm. So all of that information is just because I went to map. I clicked mm -hmm. on uh, mm -hmm. Miami Dade and that came up. Now, yeah. That gives you up the I am again we're still in the big picture. And then if I want to look at the the gap, I'm going to click here. And what you see here is how they establish um the English language arts fast, uh algebra, which is best and they use Mm -hmm. Best is the state exam, standardized exam, mm -hmm. and then there's mm -hmm. the um, end of, of uh, uh, school year exams, ELC. So that's why you have two. But you buy subject, what they test, and then over here it tells you how large the gap is or is not. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So all that information is available now. If I'm remember now, I'm in advance. So now I want to say, okay, which is where we're going to. So this is about mm -hmm. seven steps. It's been about 20 minutes. We're now mm -hmm. digging. We're not just looking at the big picture. We're actually mm -hmm. digging into um, tables. This table is the entire state. Mm -hmm. So the number of students uh, that took the best, which is the benchmark, mm -hmm. was 1.7 million. Um, the number of students at level one was 401,000, uh, which is 24%. And um, the number of students is um, 401,000 at level two. So level one, which mm -hmm. would be F, level two, um, which would be here. Now, I down here at the bottom, and I'm not sure you can see this. I'm going all the way down here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to adjust this so, as you can see, I can go all the way over to uh, here, where it's level three and above. That was what we talked about. And I can see that for all these subjects for the entire state. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to do one more thing. On the left, I'm going to go over here on the left under assessments. Okay, and it, it gives you all or individual. I'm going to stay on all. I'm going to use an indicator. It has three different indicators. The first indicator um, here, let's see. First indicator, you can look at this any way you want to look at it, by poverty, by groups. Uh, I'm going to look at it by race. Right. So I'm filtering number one by race. I'm going to filter number two by race. And I'm going to filter number three by race. In other words, I want to look at all assessment, but I want to look at it by race. Right? Right. And then I want to include all schools. 
This particular chart that I'm looking at here, as you can see, this is this is for the entire state. That's why you see the state right here, right mm -hmm. here, All right? So I'm going to go into this area, and I'm going to look, and these are, this is 23-24 data. Mm -hmm. now, this also takes you backwards to 22-23. It'll take you to 2021. It'll take mm -hmm. you to 2018-19. So we're just going to stay here, which is this group of data here. Right mm -hmm. here, American Indian, Asian, uh, Black, right here. Mm -hmm. So then we can look at that data and look at level one for the whole state all the way across to level five. That's And what I'm doing here in their system is different in other systems, but in the Florida system, which is what we're going to focus on, in the Florida system, we can look at the map, look at counties, and then we can look inside the county. We can look at the gap, None, know and understand where the quote gap is, or we can say, okay, what we really like to see, and this is where I am now that I need to talk to them. I'm down to looking at English language arts and mathematics by race, mm -hmm. level one through level five. Mm -hmm. Level five is um, an F level below, uh, level um, two is a D level. Those two things in, in for black kids is roughly 60%. I think it's like 59, 58.9 or something like that. And then proficient and above is level three and above. You can see it says that right here. Okay. It says a percent of students level three and above. So the control point for them is level three and above. That's how we get the ABC. So if level three is a C, level um, four would be a B, and level five would be an A. So that's all this data is here, and it's done for the state. It's already ready. What I need to be able to do that I, I, I haven't figured out yet, and I really want them to explain it to me, mm -hmm. um, so that I, it'll be easy for me because I'm doing more because you're still working on a person and I'm seeing we need to be already ahead. So it takes, what is it? We're at 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, excuse me, in 30 minutes, I can bring that person totally up to speed to where I am right now in 30 minutes. Right. On, in the, in the inside the Department of Education in Florida. And my, a lot of the time, this is what people are afraid of. You know, they're afraid, what is it that I don't know? Well, first thing you, you learn what you don't know, then you know it. <laughs> That's the truth. You know, I mean, you, 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 you know, people are afraid of the unknown. Yes. So this is the unknown. And mm -hmm. it's also right now invisible. So it's impossible to them because it's mm -hmm. invisible. But we're going to make it visible, mm -hmm. which makes it possible. Then we're going to learn it, which means we know it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 31 minutes total. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I wanted you to, to watch me go through. Now, remember, I did not know this. I had to research this. I had to put in a public records request. I had mm -hmm. to talk to uh, the general counsel's office, and they identified the public records person in mm -hmm. the state of Florida for the whole department. And then I went to um, two different areas within the department, which I've already identified, so they don't mm -hmm. have to do it. But that's what would be done in each area. So yeah. if you consider... Yeah. Consider what I've done is on behalf of the state of Florida, mm -hmm. we are 80% through the entire process. Yeah. Then, then all we'd have to do. Now, something else that's very nice is see this right here. It says definitions. Mm -hmm. And I use 
I, I use a process, um, an achieve model is called Dare to Achieve. Mm-hmm. And I tell people, you know, as an acronym, if you want to achieve, if you look at, you know, A C H I E V E, you have to mm-hmm. remember to achieve, you have to spell it with an H. Mm-hmm. And H will help you because right below that it says help. <laughs> Yeah. And if you click on help, you can ask any question you want. That's how I learned this process. Mm-hmm. Yes. I wanted to achieve this level of understanding in Florida. Mm-hmm. I had to go through a series of processes mm-hmm. and not be afraid to hit the, the clip to say help, ask the mm-hmm. question, and yeah. then let it point me in the direction right. that I need to go. Mm-hmm. So that's how I learned. That's exactly how I learned to do this. Mm. So in here, I'm going to just click this for a minute. Here, as you can see, um, these are cross-reference lists of abbreviated mm-hmm. labels, right? Mm-hmm. And what the reason why the person wants to know this is because it gives it definitions. Yeah. Um, when it's looking at their charts, you go, well, what is what does EOC mean? Well, it's end of course, right? What does fast mean? Florida Assessment of Student Thinking. Um, mm-hmm. What does best mean? Benchmarks for excellent student thinking. Now they're going to see fast. And they're going to see fast and best a lot. So they mm-hmm. want to know that right away. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are the kinds of things that um, they're they're immediately available. And now we're at thirty four minutes. So now we know definitions. Now we know where to go to help. Now we know how to do a regular search. Now we know how to do an advanced search. Now we know how to look at Florida uh, by counties. Now we know how to look at Florida according to the achievement cap. Now we know how to build a report using just black students or black versus white students. There is a different one that allows you to do that as well. Right. So these, those are the kinds of things that I wanted to make sure that you knew so that when you're talking to people, you have the latest information, you mm-hmm. know what Florida is doing, you know the data is already there. So for your conference, it would be important for people to know that. And maybe, um, uh, I'm not sure how beneficial it would be. Do you have breakout sessions at your conference? Um, which only the youth and college division is broken away from the adults. Okay. So it, one of the things that um, uh, all of your branches should know, because all of your branches are in a city or county, and mm-hmm. if they're in a city or county, they're going to need to know this information. Whoever their education chair is, the president and education chair need to know this. The education chair needs to know it in detail, which means that they need to spend at least as much time as we just spent. Uh-huh. And the president just has to know that the education chair knows what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really because the president has to do all the other committees, right? Yes. You know, voting and so they, they, they have to know that their person is going to drill down and do exactly what I just did with you. Right. Right. And, and the fear of the unknown of mm-hmm. the person who, who, who indicates they mm-hmm. want to do education. Yeah. And if, if they decide they want to do that and they're in that position, what I just went through with you, they need to know that at minimum. Before yeah. they look at discipline, before they look at um, all that other stuff that is going to be, those are obstacles. Those are barriers. But yeah. the first thing is, what's the purpose? The purpose is, where are our children achieving academically? And what's the standard that we want to measure them by? Yeah. Because that's the only way they can do effective advocacy. But you know what this system has the school district doing? It's driving teachers crazy. There well, is... let me just 
let me say something to you about that uh, because that comes up. That came up. You know what, Mrs. Let me, let me just try to reach Mrs. Moore. Hey, Siri. Hmm? Um, call William Moore. Calling William Moore. Mobile. She wanted to step in. Um, I wanted to go to teachers for a minute, not here. Um, but I want to, this is this is the flip side of what I found in my research was problematic. Okay. Maybe still sleeping. Hello. I mean, just more. I sent you a a that link this morning. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Um, the let's just flip the script. So, <clears throat> the category that we're looking at is our kids within the system. The first thing that I tell anyone that's advocating for education is you need to know who represents whom. Now, I recommend, and I made sure I did this and doing the period and for others that I've trained, is to put in a public records request and get a copy of the teachers union contract and read it. And here's the reason why. The teachers, and are you in AFT or NEA or both? You talking to me? Yes. Uh, when I, I was which, a teacher, when I was a teacher, um, uh, we went on a walkout and I helped to form what's now known as AFT because we didn't have a union okay. at all. Okay, so you're in the AFT side of the union's hierarchy. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. there, there's NEA and there's YEA. Okay. Yeah, you I have know. NEA. Mm -hmm. You have, have NEA on your on your committee, right? I have both. Do you yes. have AF, both have, AFT on your state national board committee? The national board has both. Okay, and it just are they both on your education committee? <clears throat> Pardon me. Are they both on your education committee? The, the names are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, is that a signal? You said their names are. Does that mean mm -hmm. they're participating? That means that we haven't started that process yet. Oh, okay. All right. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Because on, mm -hmm. on, yeah, but they, on will be, your, they will be there. Mm -hmm. They will be a part of it. Okay. They will and be that, yes. that's, a, that's, a, that's an important signal. So we're going to talk about AFT. AFT and NEA are different, but they both have contracts. Right. Whoever's going to do education at the local level <coughs> must put in a public records request and ask for three things minimum. And in our case, our template asks for 33, but there are three things minimum. Number one is a copy of the teachers union contract. And the reason for that is you can only hold the teachers accountable for what's in the contract. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you hear people say, like they say about parents, well, the teachers are not doing their job. Well, the teachers don't care about our kids. Well, you can say that about some teachers. You could say that about some parents but you can't say that and put them all in a lump group. So the person that's gonna be advocating has to understand how to distinguish between all and some, because the majority of them do care and the majority of parents do care. And the majority of the parents are involved. And how do I know that? Because when I break down a, a a particular school or even the state, the first thing I'd look for is what is the attendance rate? If I look at the attendance rate, it means that the parents of those students are following the law 
because the law requires them to send their kids to school. Mm-hmm. That's the first step in involvement. And they, they get a grade. So if it's 80% plus, um, that's a B. If it's 90% plus, that's an A. So um, so this is, a, this is the flip side of what we just did. So I would take a different 15 minutes. I'm trying to get you so that you hear what an hour would be with a person who is training to be a trainer. The first 30 minutes is you have to know your whole state. That's what we did. The mm-hmm. next 15 minutes, let's talk about your local school boards and your local educator union, because that's the priority. There are other unions, but the educator union. You cannot have a decent conversation in support of or against something until you know what they've negotiated with the board. And the reason you need the union contract is you need to see who signed for the board who is supposed to represent the people because they're elected, right? That's where you can find out who is responsible within the contract for what. What has been agreed to? So, for instance, you go, you hear a board member at a press conference and the board member, because they voted against something, they think, well, the union kept us from being able to do that because. Well, the question is, that I found out, of all the people that I trained and all the boards that I went before, the vast majority of them had never read the union contract, even though they were blaming for good or bad. They had never read the contract. Even the oh, board I'm members. Sure. I'm positive. Yeah. So, but that's difficult to do, and that's why we're behind. The union, um, the teacher in the union has a rep in every school. Mm-hmm. So they know what they're, and I'm looking at organization now. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at order and organization. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at order, organization, and representation. Yes. Okay. So, and I, I, I arranged a meeting in, as a part of this process. I arranged a meeting with the local union president, the state union president, and national representatives from that union in the same meeting at the same time about the school district. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because what happens is whatever it is we're advocating for, we need to know, okay, is this something the union can affect? Is this a union responsibility or is this a board responsibility? And people need to understand Mm -hmm. the board cannot hold the union accountable for anything except what it negotiates. And whatever it negotiates should be in the in the union contract. Mm-hmm. So know that before you start. Let's say for instance, um in most union contracts that I've read, there is mm-hmm. a section in the union contract that says the teacher has sole responsibility for the grade one average. Okay. All right. Now that's something mm-hmm. a parent needs to know. Because mm-hmm. if your child's coming home with a with a, a four point and they go to take the local uh test to get into um the local public university and they don't score uh well enough in uh, in math or um uh uh, reading, which is required by the public yes. institution, mm-hmm. then the problem goes back not to the state exam. The problem goes back to your grade point average and whether or not it represents the quality mm-hmm. of work necessary to do 
freshman type work. Mm -hmm. And there are direct correlations. But at the same time, the correlation between the grade point average and the state assessment, which the state is responsible for setting, that's another indicator if whether or not you can get a decent grade on the ACT and the SAT. Those things oh. are all correlated. Because the state gives the standardized exam, uh -huh. and the teacher gives the criterion-based exam for which they're responsible for uh -huh. in their contract. They're not yes. responsible for the state. And we want to make sure that whoever is the advocate for the NAACP, they need to know that before they even walk in the door. Uh -huh. it makes It'll make their job much easier and much more effective. Yes. So those are the kinds of things from the teacher standpoint. And then your position in support of or not support of of the teachers is then based on what did they negotiate in their contract. In other yes. words, if the union had a negotiation with the school board and it negotiated a contract and, and, and went back to the membership, had the membership voted on it, and then it was ratified and they signed it. They then can't go out and complain mm -hmm. about the district because they signed it. Yeah. Right? So that's how you can, you can stay out of the politics. I'm talking about the local advocate now. The local advocate can stay out of the politics by speaking to, one, the law, which the contract is covered under law, two, understanding policy, which is the board, and three, understanding the procedures that are based on the policy, and then understanding the contract, and then you can talk about outcomes. All right. Right. So there's a little there's a I have a sheet that I use and it has that on it. And every advocate should know in their head. And if they don't have it in their head, put it in a folder. So when they're talking and advocating for our kids, they know exactly what they're doing. If you're talking about a procedure. You need to know the difference between a procedure and a policy. Yes, because the school uh, group can decide they want to do something a certain way and it's their procedure at the school, but it's not necessarily a policy of the district. And for policy, the policy has to be in alignment with the law. Yes, it does. Right? So that's that's the training. Now we're up to 50 minutes. <laughs> I'm going in blocks. So I yes. want you to, you to know how the training goes, but it always mm -hmm. goes with them looking at what they're looking at. And that's why mm -hmm. the first thing they want is a copy of the union contract. Mm -hmm. right? Because you, you have to know policy, you have to know law, and the contract is controlled by those two things. Then you are an informed advocate. That's, 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 that's the pull of it all. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to go. I wanted us to go through it. So we're we're at fifty minutes. What that person knows in fifty minutes uh -huh. is a total system, clearly. And as I said before, for our kids specifically, because it comes back to money. Uh -huh. So immediately, from a money standpoint, you want to know. How much money, and this is a public records request, is all on one sheet of paper. Uh -huh. You want a copy of the union contract. You want um, at least five years of how much money they receive for Title I. Uh -huh. Because if they say our kids are poor and the federal government is getting money to you under Title I, then I'm going to ask you, Who's getting paid under Title One? Uh -huh. Right? 
Right. I'm, talk, I'm talking money. Right. Number two, I'm going to ask you whether the pe- people being paid be, uh, uh, that are working under Title I, have they received the necessary, effective, quality, professional development mm-hmm. under Title II? Because that comes with money also. Yeah. Right? So you, you start, then now we're talking money. Now we're talking program, we're talking curriculum, and we're talking money just by bringing up those two money issues. I said Title I, mm-hmm. but I really would say Title I funds. And I would say Title II, but I'd say Title II funds. Uh, yeah. I would say students with disabilities, but I would say student with disabilities funds. Uh-huh. Instead of just walking in and say, well, I want to know your budget and the money, they can throw stuff at you all day long. You have to be specific about what monies you're talking about. That's right. Because that's the only way you can track it. Uh-huh. So when I did the prototype, I knew every teacher that was being funded by Title I. Uh-huh. I knew what their salaries was. I knew what their race was. I knew what school they were in. And I could look at the report card and then I could make a determination. So it's about making an informed uh-huh. decision. So we're at um, 54 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So in, in the train the trainer piece, it normally there's an hour and a half. Uh-huh. In the first hour, we're doing exactly what you just went through. Uh-huh. Then there's the stop, and you say, "Okay, now pull out your paper and ask me whatever questions you want to ask." Right. Because that gives them a 360 degree circle. Uh-huh. If they're missing two degrees in what I just went over with you. Uh-huh then they don't have a circle of knowledge of understanding what they're doing in advocacy. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's an emotional attachment to our kids. And yes. it's not the emotional attachment to our kids that you want to do as an advocate. You want to have that passion and a plan and knowledge to be mm-hmm. an effective advocate for our kids. And you don't want to walk in a room to be an advocate with people who know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They already know. If they have a contract, they know. If they wrote the policy, they know. If they they receive the money, they know. And if you Mm -hmm. don't have basic elementary understanding of the system, Mm -hmm. you cannot be effective. Not as an advocate. Yeah. So as far as now, as far as this, we're still in the Florida Department of Education. We Mm -hmm. spent fifty-five minutes. Mm-hmm. And we've gone five different levels um, of understanding how the state system works, where the yes. state system data is. We've <laughs> gone through union contracts. We've gone through mm-hmm. policy. We've gone through law. And we've gone through funding. Yes. But we stay focused mm-hmm. on our kids. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So this is this is what I went through. Uh, again, mm-hmm. let's, I'm going to use Mr. Ford's name, whether he does it or not. But whoever that person is, that's the education chair, that's going to function at bare minimum. Mm-hmm. They need to understand this as background mm-hmm. before they even open their mouth. Right. Now, there are other things that you probably have your chair do, political things or whatever, but uh-huh. in terms of staying focused uh-huh. on the system yeah. that they're advocating within, they have uh-huh. to have elementary knowledge yeah. of how the system works and who in the system does what. And uh-huh. it's all driven by going through exactly what we went through in the first uh-huh. 30 minutes. Then we switch to contracts, uh, uh, union contracts. Right. And then we switch to definitions so we mm-hmm. have definitions uh, right in front of us and we should know the key definitions for instance here um, best and fast 
and EOC. Those are the first three that they need mm -hmm. to understand. Yes. Because those are, those are the measurements. Hi, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Moore, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good morning. Good Dr. morning. Lee. Good morning, <laughs> Dr. Moore. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back again to this is a critical area here. Yes. Um, now you know I have a meeting at nine, right? Yeah, I I got you. I'm okay. I'm done. And okay. not only am I done, I don't want you I'm to be done. I just need another session. <laughs> well, no, you you can have all the sessions you want, but what I'm going to do that I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take this particular session because of your meetings, mm -hmm. and I'm going to um, uh, record this. Then I'll send this to you because yes. in your next session mm -hmm. you want to go back through this and decide what is it you want covered in your next session. Yes. Um, but this is your yes. First of all, let me just thank you for this uh, opportunity. And it is, it's extremely important. And the only thing I can tell you is I'm sure glad I have a background in all these subjects so I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in Title I all those years, yep. worked in special